Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I am Angie with the Michael and Angie Foundation. Today I'm really, really super excited to share with you guys a recipe. I haven't done a recipe in a while, and this one's new for me. I just saw it on TikTok, and it really only needs a few ingredients and a few supplies, and um, it is homemade ricotta cheese. And the greatest thing about it for me is that it makes me feel very self-sufficient and it's like like ricotta cheese is kind of a fancy cheese to me like for Italian dishes like lasagna and like stuffed shells and things like that and so just like knowing that I can whip together some ricotta cheese in about half an hour um, is really cool and I'll show you guys what I have made This is, this is my beautiful ricotta cheese that I've made. So this is kind of the result that you're going to get. And let me show you the ingredients that you will need. First, you'll need some milk. Um, not skim milk or 1%, at least 2%, but preferably whole milk. And I've heard that um, raw unpasteurized milk is best, but that might be hard to get your hands on. <laughs> I'm using 2% right now. And so I'm going to supplement that with some heavy whipping cream because it's the fat that's going to separate into the curds and turn into the cheese that you want. So low fat, skim milk, no fat milk, don't use that. Um, and then you're going to need some vinegar. And this is going to provide the acid that's going to help the milk to separate into cheese and whey. And I've tried it with lemon juice and I found that regular white vinegar works better and you'll need a measuring cup some cheesecloth and you'll need a strainer and then a bowl to collect the whey and you'll need a slotted spoon like this all right let's get started i almost forgot you will also need some salt just regular table salt to add a little seasoning to your ricotta cheese all right, in my experience, this process produces uh, more whey than ricotta cheese. So have a big container like this ready to collect the whey and some space in your fridge. And as this is cooking, I'll explain to you guys some of the really great things you can do with whey. It's not something that you just have to throw away as a byproduct actually has a lot of exciting uses. So let's get started. We are going to take our milk, and I'm only gonna do a half right now because my pot's not really big enough. Last time I did a whole one and it was just like overflowing. So we're gonna pour about half of this gallon of milk into our pot here. Okay, now I'm going to supplement this 2% milk with some of the heavy whipping cream. I'm not really measuring it out, I'm just doing like maybe a third to half a cup there. And we'll give it a little stir to incorporate it. Then we're going to turn on the heat. We're going to turn it on to medium. And you can use a thermometer to, to watch it to get to 200 degrees. You don't want the milk to boil. You just want it to kind of get to a very, very low simmer where it starts to get frothy and then you'll take it off the heat. So we're going to turn this on, turn it to medium and maybe, maybe within about 10 minutes, it'll get to the heat, the point that we want it to be. Just incorporating that heavy cream fat and we'll let it sit. All right, now that we're waiting for the milk to warm up to 200 degrees, I'm gonna talk about the benefits of whey. If you have not already heard, um, I'm new to whey, I'm new to like the whole cheese making process, but I was Googling it and it's amazing. Like there's so many things that you can do with whey and health benefits. So first of all, like the bodybuilders, um, and people who are into like getting fit and building muscle, you guys know that whey protein is awesome for building muscle. So you can buy it in a powder form 
probably other forms too, but you can also just make your own. <laughs> um, so whey is good for building muscles. It also has a lot of probiotics. It has the lactobacillus bacteria in it, which is good for your skin. It's good for your hair. It's good for your gut flora. And so you can, you, you can drink it. You can mix it in with smoothies. You can soak beans and grains in it. You can use it like in all kinds of cooking things. I would do a Google search if you're curious about the uses of whey. You can also put it in a bath. I've used it in the bath. I've diluted it and fed it to my plants. You can feed it to your pets. <sighs> you can put it on your skin. You can put it in your hair. Like I just love that it has so many uses. So you're gonna end up with a lot of it and you can give it away to people. If someone you know is on antibiotics, it's really good to supplement your antibiotics with a probiotic, so give it to them. Um, yeah, so whey is awesome. It kind of has a sour taste to it. I don't like it by itself, but it's not bad in like smoothies and you get that feeling of like, mm, I'm doing something good for my body, so it's awesome. Mm. This is a little tub of homemade lemon ricotta that I made the other day that I'm planning to gift to a neighbor friend. Um, I can follow up with a recipe for that. It's super easy and super delicious. Like you can spread it on toast, you can mix it in with pasta. There's a really awesome like chickpea and whipped ricotta um, recipe that I found on TikTok. That's where I got this from too. That you eat with like pita chips. It's so amazing. I could follow up with that too. Another use for whey is pickling your vegetables. Um, so this is my first time trying that, but I have a jar here. This is like my little makeshift airlock thing. <laughs> Um, not sure if it's working or not. Maybe I did not add enough of the probiotic. We'll check on that, but yeah, that's another use. So whey is super handy, super useful, and I just love like all the good bacteria. It's good to play with good bacteria. All right, let's check on our milk. It's been a few minutes. It's not quite there yet. With this pot, sometimes there's a little bit of milk that kind of, um, really scalds but like sticks to the bottom of the pot so I like to give it a stir once in a while and kind of loosen that once the milk is ready you'll need about a third to half a cup of vinegar that you'll pour in and about half a teaspoon of salt okay now we see that our milk has gotten frothy it's almost to the boiling point here so we turned off the heat and now the fun part we're going to add our vinegar and it will start curdling right away we'll add our salt and we'll give it a little stir just to incorporate that vinegar you can already see it curdling up really nicely bam and then we're going to set a timer for 10 minutes and just let it do the work itself i've got my little straining contraption set up in the sink here. I've got a double layer of cheesecloth inside of a strainer on top of a bowl. So when the timer goes off, I will pour the liquid into here. It'll catch and strain the cheese. The whey will collect below. I taught my daughter this recipe um, earlier this week and I just thought it's so easy and quite fun and it takes ingredients that are easy to get. So a lot of us already have milk, already have um, vinegar on hand. It's not expensive. So it's just something that I really think is like, should be passed around and more people should know how to make their own cheese because it's that easy and that, that inexpensive. Let's take a peek at the cheese as it's progressing. You can see there it's making these nice little curds and the way left behind is gonna have kind of a yellowish tint to it we've got seven minutes left on the time okay 10 minutes is up let's take a look look at those nice curds we didn't have to do anything but wait and now we're going to go ahead and strain it 
you can pour it in slowly because um, it's going to be hot and you don't want it to splash up on you. And now we just wait for this to finish straining. It will do that on its own for uh, about 10 minutes. And then you can go ahead and gather up the corners of the cheesecloth and kind of squeeze out the extra liquid if you'd like. Let's take a peek at our whey that's collecting down there. All right, while we wait for this ricotta cheese to strain, I want to share with you guys another use for this amazing whey. Um, so, I've read different things about how long it keeps in the fridge. So if you're iffy, like if you don't use it up right away or give it away right away, you can even freeze it. So I poured it into an ice cube tray and here's a crazy use. All right. But just hear me out on this. I've actually used it as deodorant. It works really well. Actually, I've only had to reapply it once. So I apply it in the morning and then once in the afternoon and it's been amazing like for counterbalancing the bacteria in the underarm area. All right, I've mm -hmm. gathered up the edges, corners of my cheesecloth to help it kind of drain a little bit faster. And you're going to want to wait at least a few minutes because it's going to be hot. And then you can just go ahead and squeeze, squeeze that excess liquid out and you'll be left with the whey and the cheese. Now you'll want to save the cheese and the whey in the fridge or freeze the whey, give it away, use it up, and thank you guys for watching. Bye-bye.